All right, warm welcome everyone. Uh, today is a progress update of my Deluxe Reverb reissue and the rebuild of my Deluxe Reverb reissue to build a honest AB7063 Deluxe Reverb Blackface amp um, but with a bunch of improvements. And I'm going to go through some of those improvements now. So what I've been doing the last couple, uh, like last week and a half or so, is sourcing components. So here's uh, basically a shipment I got in from Tube Depot. Not sponsored by them at all. It would be super cool. But So I got brand new, um, basically all brand new components. I stripped out everything. You're going to see like all the sockets. Uh, it's, you know, the power tube sockets were worn. So I decided to just strip everything. Start over. It's going to be a brand new amp after it's all done. Um, another improvement I'm going to make, and I've been looking at a lot of the original 64, 65 blackface amps for inspiration, um, as well as the Handwire 64 from the from Fender directly, the new Handwired 64. And um, and a lot of people online are sort of on the on the fence about if they like that 64 or not. I mean, it's definitely an improvement over the 65, but they could have taken it so much further than they did, and I think that's where the, a lot of the complaints come from um, about the amp. There's a huge forum entry about you know folks that love it, hate it, share their opinions on there. So I definitely recommend giving you that a read if you're in the market for a 64. Uh, you may be surprised. But here's some things that I'm going to do on this amp to improve it. Uh, you might have noticed, and I think I talked a little bit about it last um, video. I'm going to do some mods that I've uh, learned about. One of the things is basically a switch that turns off the tremolo or disables it entirely. That adds some gain. That's like a Cesar Diaz uh, mod of sorts or Steve Ray Vaughan. I haven't done too much, but I think it's a lot along the side, the lines of pulling V1. I'm going to jump the normal channel, I think I like, talked about before. Uh, so I'm going to have reverb on the normal channel. This reverb or this normal channel is going to be a Fender Dual Professional uh, tone stack. So keep in, in line with the Fender thing. You're going to see in the front panel, I got some uh, pots where on input 2. That's going to be where the mid pot goes. So I got some mids. You're going to notice that there's a shoulder here. So see that little black thing there? That's basically an isolation washer, isolation shoulder. One of the th things about the Deluxe Reverb, which some people love, uh, I guess, some people like it, some people hate it, is the hiss that's going on uh, in the noise floor. So I'm going to do my very best, and this is that shoulder I learned about from the Fender Custom Shop amp, my uh, dual professional, and I've implemented, ever since I learned about that technique, I've impl implemented it on every single one of my amps from that point forward. So shoulder washer, shoulder washer, isolation, that's going to lower the noise floor coming on the input, which is super important, right? And then we get into a little bit more of the component selection. Uh, this is sort of, you're going to look a lot at these brown uh, resistors. Those are resistors. Those are military-grade uh, Dale precision metal film resistors. They're going to be on the cathode uh, piece as well as the, the plate load. And just anywhere that attaches directly to ground because uh, that's the source of where the electrons come in. Uh, basically, it's, it's sort of a false uh, fallacy that the positive is where the electrons flow from positive to negative, but actually the electrons come from negative to positive, which is kind of funny, right? But so the entry of noise is going to be on the uh, basically the ground side. So anywhere that goes to ground that's not part of the signal, that's, that's more or less loading or dumping some of the signal to ground, I have these metal film precision resistors. Likewise, if there's any place that's only for metal, uh, basically voltage drops, I have these metal film uh, precision, precision. So here's like for the phase inverter. Um, this is going to be a, more or less a quiet phase inverter. That's a lot of the source of hiss. They save with vintage amps. Replace those 100K carbon uh, composite resistors with these metal films, and you'll be all set. Uh, the RN70 is the kind that was upgraded in Jerry Garcia's amp. So his two... 
uh, twin reverbs were modded, uh, the plate loads were with these RN70 type resistors to lower that hiss and to lower that noise floor. One of the extra things that I've learned about the last on Steel String Singer number two and I'm implementing for all my amps moving forward is using wire wound resistors for the power uh, supply section. And these wire wound resistors are the lowest noise introduction from basically thermal noise um, when you're dropping voltage and when there's um, amp bridge coming through there or current coming through that resistor, the wire wound are the lowest. Now, some folks say that that has uh, inductive properties, which it does, and it is in the spec sheet, but that's going to eliminate frequencies up in like the megahertz range and, and RF. So these are not a good choice for RF, but they are an excellent choice for power supplies. These F and T capacitors are very low ESR. ESR is basically the uh, resistance, the equivalent series resistance of this. Uh, ideally, you're going to get as low as possible, and that will uh, basically smooth out that filter or smooth out that power um, the lower it is and less 60 hertz hum coming through. I mean, we do have some mitigated, mitigating um, design here. Uh, just from Fender, there's a choke that will smooth out the power supply. And this whole thing should be, in theory, a very low noise power supply. So again, I'm going for lowest noise possible in here and without sacrificing the tone of the circuit. Anywhere that you see like these, these kind of brown resistors are carbon film resistors. And I don't know if those really give the same sort of uh, characteristics, and I know they don't actually, of carbon composition. But that's all right because these are going to be really low noise, and the carbon makes me feel a little bit better. Some folks say it doesn't matter at all. But these are 1-watt carbon film resistors, and these are in the signal path. So this is a slope resistor. This is not going to ground. This is purely a signal coming across it. Some folks say that metal film is too pure of a signal coming across, and it's not degrading the signal enough to where, quote, warmth comes from. Now, it's up to you what you decide on what warmth is, but that's not something I'm going to introduce into mine. I like these for the in the power uh, in the signal itself. So anywhere you see here is part of the signal and it's not part of like loading the signal down or uh, basically a ground or a power. So that's why it's kind of amazing actually to see how little signal comes through. Now, this is another Jerry Garcia thing, and a lot of folks online who rebuild these deluxe reverbs will use silver mica capacitors uh, for the signal part. So here's um, some signal, basically the, the treble side of uh, that circuit, and then there's reverb, and there's a bunch of other things. You're going to notice I have a few uh, things missing. My last shipment, here's a, my Mauser shipment. This is basically how you get everything from Mauser in a bag of bags. Everything's really nice. Um, basically, I have that Mauser Tube Depot order. Um, I'm going to do a resto mod look. So everything inside is going to look like more or less. I'm, I'm aiming towards, a, yeah, a resto mod look and feel. And if you're familiar, if you're hot rodder, a resto mod is basically taking an old something and adding, keeping the, the flavor of how old it is but adding some upgraded components um, for a car terms that means like adding disc brakes to a 1968 mustang which would be really cool and really help the improvement and you're likely not going to notice unless you really take notice you know sort of thing so that's what i'm going for here is that first glance this is going to look like uh, i think uh a 65 deluxe reverb based on the you know the cloth wiring but then as you look in deeper, you're going to notice, okay, well, that component's different. Or this, and look, there's no doghouse. There's a power supply. So that's sort of what I'm going for on this one. Uh, amplified parts is the last thing I ordered. If you guys are in the market, they got the Black Friday thing going on right now. Um, not sponsored by them at all. I'm just giving you a friendly tip. 11% uh, off of everything. 
So part of the things I'm doing is that all the military precision I can really only get from uh, Mauser. And then for most of the tube-related stuff, like sockets and whatever, I have a 10% coupon, so I use that on most of the stuff here. And orange drops. Orange drops, polyester, are on amplified parts. So that's what I'm waiting for, as well as a few push-pull pots. So I'm going to have push-pull bright pots uh, basically to engage and disengage the bright switch or the bright cap on there. So i got a few things going on. Looking forward to it. I haven't drilled the back yet for where the preamp is going to come out, but i got a few ideas I need to work through, and I'm going to share that with you in the next video. So stay tuned and subscribe.